morning. Uh, I hope that this microphone works. Um, I'm Takemasa Miyoshi. I'm a chair of this meeting, uh, RISDA uh, 2017. So this is a joint workshop with uh, seventh annual Japanese data simulation workshop. This Japanese workshop is usually held in Japanese, but this time uh, we combined with this international symposium and have the uh, joint meeting. So um, welcome and thank you very much for coming. Um, so we have a uh, four days event and hope that we will enjoy. So first, um, this morning I will uh, give you some opening talk and followed by keynote, two keynotes. So first I will start with um, the general uh, con but topic and concept about this uh, symposium. So as we all know that data simulation uh, combines the observations and the numerical simulations and to get the benefit from that. And the simulation is the process driven because we have equations of motion and physics and solve it. So it's process driven and data um, it's just data, so it's not process driven. It's just uh, we take the data and we try to combine these two. That's the uh, idea of data simulation. So first I would like to introduce what we have been doing here in Riken, in Kobe, um, in our group data simulation research team. So we um, started this group in uh, 2012. October and we have three uh, main um, themes that we have been working on. One is the theory that we call core and also we did uh, research in numerical weather prediction mainly. Um, that's a world leading level so we call it lead and also we try to explore the new application fields of data simulation that we call it pioneer. So we have three uh, peers to support the, the team and to reach the goal to be uh, world's leader in data simulation research. So we have now uh, 13 full-time scientists working in our group. So the group started in 2012 um, October. And then I moved in the beginning of 2013 from the University of Maryland. And we have a number of scientists starting. And we now have 13 people. So that's, that's good. And to support those people, we have a number of projects like this. So we have a project with JAXA, that's a space agency, on the precipitation data simulation. And also, we are working on the geostationary orbit radar. Uh, never exist yet, but uh, we are planning. And also, the big data issue and the post K, that's a, the successor of the K computer, and the local government center of excellence in science. And also, we have industry collaborations with the Tokyo Electronic Company, power company. So to highlight what we have achieved so far, uh, we did this big data simulation work that we, pre so if you attended this meeting two years ago, we had that whole session on big data simulation. And the last year in August, we had this paper published in the bulletin of the American Meteorological Society um, on the big data simulation. So in your handout, you must have this uh, picture, uh, the, folder with this picture. Um, this is a cover page of this paper. Uh, we also did the press release and well covered by newspapers and the broadcasting was good, but mostly in Japan. So uh, the idea is to predict this type of very rapidly changing event. So we have uh, heavy rainfall only happening in 10 or less than 10 minute period. So we first observe this echo, uh, first echo, and after eight minutes, it's already a heavy rain reaching the ground. So this was observed by the phase array. So 
So this is a um, phase array radar. So this gives a uh, hundred times more data than the previous generation. So that's a uh, different orders of magnitude data. So this is just an example of uh, uh, high impact weather, but we have a number of data coming from new sensors. That's a general trend. So we explored using this data. Uh, this is really great. And we combine with the simulation, that's high resolution simulation that can really uh, simulate that uh, rapidly changing weather. So we combine with data simulation, what we call big data simulation, because we have big data from the phase array and the Himawari 8 satellite. And we, com we use the K computer to combine and develop the system to update every 30 seconds. So this is time in seconds. So 30 seconds, we get a new data. So we process all the data within 30 seconds and do the DA, data simulation, and make the 30 minutes forecast. That's about the time range that we can predict those uh, convective system. Also, we developed a now casting method that's a interpolation, extrapolation in time. So we detect the motion in the vertical and also horizontal, and then extrapolate. It's a simple method. So we combine these ideas to write this paper that's in the proceedings of the IEEE on big data simulation towards post petascale severe weather prediction. So in here, uh, we, so this is an example. We presented this example of the heavy rain in Kobe. So we are here actually, and I live in here, and I usually bike. So this morning, I decided to bike. This morning, too, I did bike, but uh, this was in 2014, um, September 11th. And by looking at this radar image from the JMA, that's a Japanese uh, weather service, but what happened was this uh, rapid development of the heavy rainfall was unlucky. But I was lucky enough, it took me about 30 minutes. I left at eight in 30 minutes. Was almost here, but it's barely, <laughs> I, I could avoid getting wet. So that was good, but if I knew that this happens, I would never try to bike that morning. So this is a time range that we would like to predict in this system. So we simulated this case with using that phase array radar. So this is uh, Kobe and we are here. This is Kobe Airport. So we have the observation image here, and this is a simulation with 100 meter resolution. And this is a case without data simulation, or without big data simulation, we use the regular data. And this is a reduced resolution, but we're using every 30 second data. So you can see how it evolves in time. So the observation shows something, but it needs to spin up. So at first it doesn't have anything. It's strange, oscillation. Um, this is nice, now it's nice at the observation. So we can see the whole slices in 100 meter resolution. So uh, the observation has a lot of missing data or the noise, but uh, simulation doesn't have noise or the missing part. So this is really great. And if you can make this prediction in the future, uh, we can even fly around here to avoid this system. So now we, we will fly into this cloud, but I will skip this. So uh, we have the extrapolation system and this big data simulation at one kilometer resolution. And this is what actually observed. This is the forecast in 10 minutes. So five minutes forecast and 10 minutes forecast. This is initial time. So the initial time is very close to the observation. But in the forecast, it becomes a little bit different from the forecast. But uh, this simulation can capture the intensifying um, convection. And it actually intensifies, not as rapid as this, but uh, it still has some signature of this intensification. So that's great. So as for the now casting, we are now getting the JMA license to produce this uh, global scale now casting. So this is the actual observation image from the satellite-based product called GS map. So this is a pre precipitation product. Um, we have a now casting system. So we, we basically follow the motion. And this is the now casting. So this, this method was published. So we apply data simulation to the now casting. So the now casting usually just follow the motion. 
but uh, we apply this TA here. So we make the forecast and combine with the observation in now casting. So the numerical weather prediction has the full physics field, but the now casting has only the flow field. So we have the flow vectors observed from the image, and then we combine with the predicted flow vectors. So you have only the prediction of the advection. Then uh, we combine these two to make the analysis. This is really powerful because we can get the observation only where we have the rain pattern, because we follow the rain pattern. So, so we compute the, the flow vector based on the previous two time steps, the image observation. Uh, the flow vector exists only where there is pre precipitation, of course, because we cannot produce the flow vector where there is nothing. So, but we need to have the full field to do the prediction. So we have the first guess from the previous time, and then we combine these two, and then get the posterior. And then we run the model because this is advected. So the flow vector will be, will be advected. So this has a clear advantage if you see this image here. And uh, four hours later, this became like that. And this image without DA but the now cast, apply the regular now casting, then this has some strange distortion because of the flow vector has some distortion. So if you apply the data simulation, here now we use the LETKF with 20 members, um, we no longer have this strange flow field so that we get a better forecast. It's almost the same as the observation. So this is good, and we apply this in real time, and every hour we get the new observation data, and we, are, we predict up to 12 hours ahead. And this is now open here, weather.riken.jp. Uh, we get the JMA forecast license, because uh, Japanese, um, there's a law uh, prohibiting the weather data real time. So we need to get the license from JMA. So we got the license. It was a lot of work to get the license. But uh, we are now very happy to have this uh, weekend now cast. We'll be open through JAXA too in the near future. So uh, that was the highlight of our achievement so far. And now we are going to talk about this symposium. So this symposium here it's part of this series of the RICAM President Initiative on Data Simulation Innovation Hub. So, I, so we propose that data simulation combines um, data and simulation in general. So it can be applied to many different fields. So it has been developed in the field of weather prediction because of the uh, immediate needs for the accurate weather forecast. Um, but uh, we try to combine with different fields, the knowledge from different fields, that will benefit to the weather prediction and also feedback to other fields. So uh, we did a series of the events like DA workshop, that was a Japanese event, and the, the study camp and symposium here. And also we distributed some funds for research only within RICAN due to the limit limitation of spending of that money. Uh, but we did these things to attract different fields. So the basic concept that, as I described, that DA is the, the center now, and so applied to the meteorology or earth science or even planetary science, or using the mathematics or statistics and dynamical system theory. So the DA was like this, and is now expanding to different fields, including the social science, traffic or material flow, population, uh, finance, and neuroscience, or the machine learning techniques also can be applied to DA, and the basic physics, cosmology, or biology, medical science, and engineering fields, really lots of applications and potentials. So that will produce the societal benefits or industry applications, we have industry partners, it's already starting. And as a community, as a whole, so you are in the DA community, and we are expanding even more uh, to more direct benefits to the society beyond the meteorological applications. So the DA is a concept more like mathematical science, can be applied to many different fields. So we would like to develop 
the DA as a new scientific movement across the borders. So we can really cross the borders. So that's uh, the concept of this whole um, Regain initiative to promote the DA research. So uh, this is some pictures from the previous events. So this is a DA school. So we had uh, 44 participants and 16 from industry. So that's quite amazing. We use a speedy model exercise. That was very helpful. And we did this workshop. So it's not, not many people, but we still have people from different fields. There are 34 participants from like space science, brain science, uh, drug discovery, and uh, steel industry, and more. So we really were successful to attract those people from different communities. Um, we did also did a training camp. So this was a whole week camp here in Kobe. And we had people, well, students, and in different fields, like civil engineering or atmospheric oceanic science, cosmology, ecology, and biology. So they are all different fields. So we're very happy to have those people interested in the data simulation. So again, so now we are now here. It's kind of closing. The Japanese fiscal year ends in March. So we have this event, and we will conclude this RECAN initiative for this fiscal year, and would like to propose the next um, period. And with the support from the whole international data simulation community, and also um, the different um, communities in the science and even social science. So uh, this event is organized like this. So I didn't say anything about weather or um, specific, well, except for the physical and the biological systems, specific applications. So the first we have, we are now here, uh, keynote and keynote. But now then we have a mathematical aspect and more model related issues without saying weather or ocean. So it's intentionally because we'd like to have different contributions in the same session. Otherwise, if we say this is a weather day and this is a biology day, then there are people, just weather people attend here and we not attend here. So I didn't like to see that happen. So that's why we organized like this. So mathematics and model related issues and what else? Multi-scale, multi-component treatments, and high performance computing and big data. So we also had an idea of um, artificial intelligence. That's an emerging field. Uh, but unfortunately, it was very difficult to attract the, the presentations on, on AI. That's why we have only big data here. And new applications. So the new applications can mean different things, but we meant to apply to different fields. And also these various physical and biological systems, that's uh, really interesting uh, applications beyond the geoscience. And parameter optimization, that's another important issue. And observation issues. So again, we didn't say what observation. So it can be any observation issues. So inevitably, because my background is uh, meteorology and atmospheric and oceanic science, most of the audience here are related to those fields. But we attract, of course, the other, other fields. So we hope that we have uh, exciting interactions beyond the borders. So uh, lastly, I would like to thank the sponsors of this event. So we were quite, as you can see, that we were quite successful um, about fundraising. So the banquet is free. <laughs> we attract the funding. And these are the main uh, contributors to this event. So Hyogo Prefecture government and Kobe City government, that's a local government. And also JAXA and JSD and RICAN and AICS, that's, that's here. And the ITES is another uh, RICAN uh, group, theoretical uh, research group. Okay, um, that's, that's it from me. So I hope you will enjoy the whole uh, four day period. And thank you again for coming. Um, we are very happy that you are here.
you all are here uh, with a happy face. Thank you very much.